That's you, yes. a lawyer? So we don't want the lights in Sperman. One thing that was kind of it, one thing that was interesting in the Virginia Constitution, I, I don't know if it was in the Constitution or whatever, lawyers, it, it was a capital offense to practice law in Virginia. Yes! <laughs> just, just for your, at one time. I'm not a lawyer. Um, any other issues you want to Yeah, I, I have, while we're at this, I have one other issue I want to talk about. Okay. Was there a hand over here? Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. Bill. One thing that we need to remember, attorneys or lawyers, the way it originally got started, they never got paid. They got hired because they were able to speak for a body, and that's what you hired the lawyer for. It was not to get paid. You never got paid. Interesting. Now it's about hey, I could be well, now. Now it's about <laughs> yes. I, I've noticed another thing. When you're going down the freeway and you see an advertisement for lawyers, what does it say? It says, attorney at law. If you are if you are at your front door, are you in your house? If you are at the river, are you in the river? Billy Fausto is arguing with the judge in one. He says that I am an attorney. In fact, in fact, in fact, he says because an attorney at law is not in law, and attorneys never practice law. What they do is they enforce statutes and ordinances which are not law. They're just rules. And uh, so it's all right to be an attorney, just as long as you're an attorney in fact, not at all. So, that's really fast. Okay. Uh, one of the main issues, I don't know how many people were on Thursday night called. Uh, Tim Turner seemed, was it Thursday night or Monday night? I can't remember which. They sort of meld together. Tell your story, we'll tell you. Okay, <laughs> you tell me which one. And then we can direct them to the, to, the, to the playback. Tim Turner seemed kind of low. And he was talking about somebody got to the funders again. Well, my whole thing is we don't need no damn funding. We have the ability to form our own currency. We are our own, we are the country with the legitimate government. And we could, we should be able to take back hints, right. pulling our own money, and, and there are several different ways. I just want your feedback because there are several different ways to fund or to create currency. I've got on my on my uh, thumb drive. I have several. I have several PDF files uh, by Dr. Edward Pop, P O P P. He was a dentist back in the 70s. Uh, in fact, 1970, he wrote he published a book called Money: Bonafide versus on Bonafide. You could go on that on the internet. You could pull that PDF file up if you want and download it to your file. Bonafide versus non bonafide. Bonafide versus non bonafide. Versus non -bonafide by Edward Pop. Okay. In on chapter seven is the best chapter. It's how to fund a country which has no money. What are we? The Republic. We have no money. There are several ways to do it. We could authorize people who have gold and silver, uh, not, not corn, but any type of gold and silver. They go out and they dig it. Arizona's pretty rich. Wickenburg's Jerome. 
all these places, they have gold and silver, but you don't necessarily need gold and silver. All you need is some sort of coinage because money is nothing but a medium of exchange. Okay? So there are different ways of doing it. Edward Pop has several different ways. I would suggest you go to that, read it, and then we can discuss it some more. But I need some input from you is that, because I'm tired of hearing all these soft stories about the funders. They got a splinter in their foot and now they can't do it. They, uh, somebody said something bad and they, they oh, I, I'm going to back off. My feeling about these funders is they're all part of this cartel. Yeah. Yeah. And we need to break this cartel, and we need to do it on our own. Right. We are an independent country. We are the legitimate country. And I just want some feedback from you, because I'm going to take this to Congress and make sure that they hear. What, how many people are here? 50? 70? Uh, at least 40. 40. 40. 43. 43, OK. I've got 43 people I can say, look, in fact, it's almost bigger than Maricopa. Yes, I wasn't there. I wasn't there. So I, I can, I, and I've got some Maricopa here. <laughs> so I can bring this to the, to the National Congress and to the Finance Committee and make sure that they hear your voice. Because right now, they're not hearing it. And I'm tired of it. They don't hear us in Washington, the back of Washington, they're not hearing us in the other. They're trying to go for this pie in the sky, Solomon mine crap, and you don't know. We can do it. There are several different ways. You can do it with gold and silver, you can get people to turn it into the mint. They mint. We can we can go out and we can recruit these mines, get them to de franchise themselves, get out of the damn corporation and come into the Republic. And we could set up a refuge city around them. But then that's, that's another reason why we need the range. We've got, a, we've got an arms manufacturer up here in Prescott that needs to come into the Republic so they can manufacture the arms that we need. And we need to be able to recruit these people. If we can recruit a mine, they could turn their gold in and the way it used to work is you would, in the 1850s, you would go out and mine, you'd get all this gold dust, and if you wanted to buy a drink, you take your bag of gold dust, very, very, very unwieldy, you take your bag of gold, gold dust, and, you, and the bar is usually higher, a great big, huge, hulking guy with the biggest thumbs in the world, and he looks at, puts his thumb in, washes it off in the glass and you pay for your drink. Well, that's sort of inefficient. So they started minting. And with when you mint your gold and silver in the coin, usually the uh, mint will take 10% of that, or whatever percent we decide that the mint can do, to pay for the printing, the, the stamping of the coins, for the building, the employees, for the machinery, for the maintenance, you name it, any type of business is going to have that overhead and that pays for the overhead. There may be a little extra left over that will help fund the government. So they put the gold back into, into a coin. Now, if you don't have a lot of gold, like some countries don't, you can, you can have proper nickel. Whatever the people decide that they want, to be able to handle the money, you know, the coins, they can do. Um, so, there are, and there are other methods. I, I will discuss those later. But that's just one of several methods. I, I have an opinion, not now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you've got a question. I have a question. In North Dakota, there is uh, more oil than all oil put together in the rest of the world. Why can't we use that? Why not? Why not? We should make it a refuge state. 
<laughs> because you can, okay, <laughs> just just me. One thing that, there, that uh, Turner has always talked about is, what is it, productivity based? Is that the word that he uses? So if we bring back companies, we get textiles, you name it, furniture, shoes, clothing, weaving, we'd have more money and get rid of all this regulation. And you could also have certificates on representative that you don't want to have. That's a sticking issue because a lot. There's one method, there's one method of creating a tax clean certificate, is what he calls it. It's issued once a year. It passes around. You pay your employees with it. They go out and they buy stuff from a, from a corporate or from a company. The company pays their taxes with those tax lien certificates. And at the end of the year, as it's stated, it's burdened. And then they reissue more money, huh. depending upon the needs of the people. So that's another way to use the fiat, not fiat, the script. So I would like some more feedback if anybody has it. Oh, Tony, you have Well, I was just going to say a while back, uh, Robert was talking about the barter system they are working on set more. And the barter set up, you would need the, the main point of the that, that would be more of a are we going to have a discussion about what well, I was just throwing that out? He's talking about I'm asking for income. That was just it. I was just throwing a barter the other way of doing it also. There's also a gold and silver exchange set up. Well, the barter exchange was set up by one fellow in the Republic. He set it up on a piggyback on another barter exchange, which is an electronic system. Uh, if you look in IRS code, there's eight pages of IRS code on, on barter. So the IRS has got their tentacles into barter. If, you, if I exchange my eggs for uh, your pig or whatever, those are reportable incidences. Believe this or not, these are reportable incidences with the IRS now. It's, it's a total insanity. So from that standpoint, what the Republic has, has done, and I don't know if you've read it, Gus, there's a banking committee, one of the committees in Congress, um, and they put together the preliminary report, which is like 34, 36 pages or something. And what they do is go more fundamental, is understand how money is created. And like one in 100,000 people really get what money is about. You just want to know that you've got something that if you want to buy a beer or you want to buy a cup of coffee, you reach in, you hand it over to the bartender and you have your, your product. Most people don't understand how money is actually created and how it's developed and then how it becomes something that's done on a national level and an international level. Well, you know, we all know that the Federal Reserve System is a money system which was set up by foreign bankers and have totally taken all of our wealth. They've taken the wealth of Americans. Congress abdicated their responsibility to do, as Gus says about coining money, they gave it to a private company and said, you manage it, and we've been paying for it since. So this is really, I mean, it's a real pivotal issue, and personally, I think what's gonna happen is the mud is gonna hit the fan before that actually gets implemented, and it will be on a more organic barter system and on something on an on a organic level that we start getting back on our feet. That's my take on it. The only, the only issue with the IRS saying that all barter is reportable, IRS deals in value, not in substance. So if you trade, if I trade you this pen or your notepad, they're going to ask, well, what's the value of the notepad? What's the value of the pen? They will assign a value. You, and you can count on that. And, and believe me, I've, I've got I've got a whole training on that Excellent. that I could give that I could share with everybody. But you're trading 
the value of this, that's one pen. How are you going to collect? You're going to take my pen? You can't. It's impossible. And how much was this? It's a pad. I traded a pad for a pen. Are you saying that if I trade my zucchini for your peas, I have to report that? That's all I'm saying. I like that Italian. That's good. <laughs> I'll tell you. I don't. I thought I once had Sicilian in me, but I found out I was a <laughs> yes, but I use it anyway. One thing that we ought to consider, you know, since she brought up North Dakota, I don't know how many people realize that North Dakota has to be the bank. We keep the money within their own state, and that's what we can do here. Yeah. And I think that's something we need to bring up to the Arizona Assembly. Anything else? Yes, I'll have to start you up with my thing. Did you send that to me? Uh, I did. Let me know. Okay. You have to remind me what I sent you what I did. I will. So, what's on your computer for anything? Okay, my computer can never go down because it's got so much on it. You better back it up. Thank you, guys. Thanks, um, now, next or in two weeks will be the fifth Sunday. Do you want to meet then, or do you want to put it off until the first Sunday in August?
once that's done, then I can step out, Aaron can step out, and try to step in. But we need to set up some policies to see this when and where. So that's where next. Well, bring that and go next. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm following Robert's rules and procedure. And now we in our campus. <laughs> <laughs> I like you. I like your rules. Okay, I'm finished. Okay, so. Uh, Brenda, we're going to have a special meeting if necessary. So the, now then, shall we uh, plan a regular meeting or not? I think we should plan a regular meeting. I second. <laughs> <laughs> now would be uh, uh, July 29 or August 5. July 29. July 29. You want to go there? Take then advantage. have one the next week, huh? Yeah. Take All right. advantage. It's the time to get together. Party. All right. Excellent. Party. Party. So next meeting will be July 29. Location to be announced. Don't know yet. Ahead of time. Yes, ahead of time. And um, it'll be at two o'clock. Don't forget the weekly round table call. Before we adjourn, there are two things we have to take care of. There's a lost and found box right there. So you ladies, if you lost your purse or a piece of silverware, should be there. Okay? Talk you later. And the next, the next, uh, now, but yes, after this meeting, we're going to have a birthday party for this guy here, Matt, and for you. I need a motion to adjourn. Yeah, I got it. What is it? I got it. I got it. My favorite say I. You're my favorite. I. Pose. And we adjourn. Shit, just do it.